So our business was formed out of an injury that I had with with my knee. I was injured on a construction site. And when that happened, I got really depressed because that was my own, only source of income. So Matt, being the good brother that he is, sits down and says, let's brainstorm and figure out a way we can make some money for you. You know, you don't have to, you don't have to despair. Like there is a solution out there. And I think for me and my wife, Shana, you know, we owned a pretty successful photography business and uh, we, were, we did pretty well the first couple of years we were in business and then the recession hit and we just, our business went downhill. Uh, we lost our house up in Nashville. We had to move in with my mother-in-law and when we, we eventually moved down to Athens and lived with my parents for a few months, just trying to get back on our feet. But to be able to be at a place now where our business is growing and we're able to make money, we're able to provide for ourselves, it's huge. And it's a story of redemption. You know, in, in our deepest, darkest moments, financially, there were thoughts of suicide. There were thoughts that I can, we can never rise out of this. I definitely had thoughts of ending my life the utter despair, hopelessness that I felt when we were going through all of that. And instead of giving up, losing hope and quitting, you dust yourself off and you look for an opportunity and when it comes, you jump on it. So when we first started the business, we were lucky enough to not have to go out and buy a bunch of tools. Most of the tools we started off using were Pa's old tools, especially uh, his, one of his old hand saws, which we like to cut the first board from each piece from. And it's, it's kind of just a way to, to keep us humble and remember that there weren't always power tools. You take that cut for granted every time you you cut it with a chop saw and it takes two seconds. He just grew up the old way and he carried that mentality throughout his whole life. And he would always tell us, you know, if something's worth doing, it's worth working hard and doing it right. <laughs> would you like to tell us what your plans are, Mr. Hall? Not really. We're gonna build us a deck out here. This is where we took out the swimming pool. This is where our pool was. Looks good to me. And that thing right there looks even better. That's what looks good. That good looking, hard working man. He loves hammering them boards. That's what the first board, right here, was the first board we put in. We started across there. We actually helped uh, our grandfather work on a deck on his back porch one time doing woodworking and Ben was involved. We actually have the video of that. Mm -hmm. You remember that? I do. Yeah, there was a point, I remember looking at that video recently and um, Pa had me hammering the last board on the deck and I think uh, I probably hit the nail one out of every five times that I struck it. <laughs> and um, Pa was standing there and Grandma had the camera and she's always narrating everything. He does hit the nail occasionally. <laughs> and she's like, well, you better watch out, Pa. You're going to turn him into a carpenter. <laughs> Ben's going to learn to be a carpenter, aren't you, Ben? Right now Okay, y'all have fun. It's interesting because we were sitting around talking the other day. And just It's so funny how things have gone full circle to where we're now doing the same thing we're doing with him when we were kids. We never knew back then when we got older that this is what we would be doing. But there was a seed that he planted inside of us about going out and 
using something and repurposing it. Because the barns that he tore down were old and decrepit and they were going to fall to the ground anyway, or rot away. And he was able to save that wood and repurpose it the same way that we're now doing with the wood that we get. So one of the things that we love about reclaimed wood is the texture of the wood that was created by the old circle saws. The circle saw was originally um, invented over in England and it was brought over when the settlers came over. When That's how they would mill the wood. It would be a huge saw blade that was a circle shape. And if there was any imperfections in that saw blade, if any of the teeth on that blade were you know, wonky or imperfect. It would create these round, round shaped etchings in the wood. And we try to keep that as part of the character of the tables. We don't try and get rid of that because that's not something you can find on wood that you're gonna buy at a local lumber yard. Most of the wood that you find at a lumber yard is gonna be cut with a band saw, which is which they start started replacing circle saws and so with a bandsaw, it's just a one smooth, pretty smooth cut that's straight across the board versus the circle saw that kind of rips through the wood. We really try to keep that character intact with the tables that we build because it tells a story. You know, it's, it's a way to age wood. And so when you see these circle saw marks, you know that this wood is at least 80 to 100 to 200 years old sometimes. There's a lot of intentional thought in this entire process. So the process of building a table is picking out the wood that you want to use, cutting it to size, sanding it, sanding it more, and sanding it even more. And then the assembly part, which is really different from piece to piece. Basically after, after we cut the pieces and we put them together, we usually give it one more final sand and then after that we blow it off with the compressed air and then we put the varnish on it. Usually it has to dry overnight to cure after the first coat of varnish. And then we'll come in the next day, we'll sand it down again with really fine sandpaper, put another coat of varnish on it, and it's gotta dry again overnight. And then it's ready to go. Yep. Um, um, basically, Shana is in charge of Instagram as far as, you know, uploading photographs and stuff like that. Telling stories is a huge part of our business. So it's the most powerful thing for our business because people get to have a glimpse and just follow along with our story. You know, we, we tell a certain part of our story, snippets here and there, but it's still happening. And I think people feel like they can be involved with it when they get to watch and, and see the photos and comment and, you know, we respond back. It's like they can have a conversation with us about each piece that we make. And that's, that's so powerful. So if I'm gonna post something, I'll send it to her. She'll say, well, maybe don't say this, say this. She was, she's gonna put something up. We collaborate on the content. But ultimately, you know, our life is an open book. We have nothing to hide, because, you know, our story is true. It's, it's, a, it's a true story about us trying to carry on the legacy of our grandfather, trying to be better people, trying to contribute to society. And I think the transparency that we have is not even something that we've intentionally done. It's just who we are, you know. If you're, if you're a person of integrity and you care about being truthful and being honest, then you have nothing to hide.